Township Shade Tree Commission meeting. Uh, we have five items on the agenda tonight, uh, the fifth of which I will need to step down because I am an employee of Cabrini College and that is on the agenda. The first item on the agenda is 823 Mill Road. Uh, could that person please step forward, identify yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Scott Kim. This is my wife, Arlene Kim. Hi. Hi. Okay, could you, uh, we have a plan before us. Do you have anything you can put on the table there that? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm holding the same plans that you have. I have a few photos here uh, of a tree that I'd like to discuss, I guess, after um, we, we, need, we say what we need to say um, with regards to the, the three that were removed. Okay. Um, it, it is a sick tree in the backyard, but I guess we could get started with the plans here. Yes, please. Okay. Um, there were three, on or around June, uh, mid-June, uh, there were three trees that were removed um, uh, toward the entrance of our uh, driveway as a result. If, if you put oh, it on the table, they can... Uh... Okay. okay. They were taken down as a result of... Uh, the trees being old, sick, um, and, and huge, large branches uh, falling onto the driveway and onto the property as well. Uh, right now, um, we're in the midst of uh, construction. It's, it's been an ongoing uh, project. Uh, we're building a LEED certified home, um, and the reason for the delay is, uh, you know, after the, the plans were drafted, we decided to take the uh, uh, pursue uh, the LEED certification silver level. Um, uh, we feel that we didn't irresponsibly take them down as they were very sick, a uh, hollow, uh, rotted trees, um, which these big branches were pretty harmful uh, the way we saw it um, uh, to, to our livelihoods. Um, uh, as a result of that, you know, we proposed to plant um, several replacement trees. Uh, according to uh, the township ordinance, um, uh, it would be an additional five trees now, the last time we had uh, this, uh, had this conversation before, uh, I had proposed to uh, plant some uh, arborvitae trees, um, and you had suggested that we plant some native deciduous trees, which is definitely what we're going to do. We uh, actually found a pretty sweet deal uh, with this uh, <laughs> nursery that has an overstock of uh, these deciduous trees. Um, so that's that's the plan, and not to mention, I mean, we've up until this point, we we've really gone above and beyond building our, our dream home, and, and we haven't skimped out in any uh, uh, element of the home. And I just want to assure you that the same is going to apply to the landscaping. I mean, we're we're not going to just cover the, uh, the the yard with uh, ugly arborvitae trees and, and 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 leave it at that. Uh, there's going to be some um, careful planning involved in, in, in planting some of these trees. Um, we, on the legend here, uh, we, we classified some of these uh, symbols as anything within this uh, column or, or this category of uh, native deciduous trees. So it's not, while we might not have a specific answer as to where each tree is going to be situated, the plan is to have these trees on the property um, once we come up with a very solid game plan for the landscaping. Uh, plan, blueprint. Okay. Um, when I read the tree removal schedule, you know, I'm adding up 15 trees were removed or are planned to be removed? Uh, there are, a, yeah, they are already removed. And actually, uh, if you look at one of them right here in this corner, um, one of the inspectors uh, who, who does visit our site uh, timely, uh, he's, uh, I believe, an engineer inspector, uh, he did take notice of that tree and I, I believe made a mention to uh, Sue Jones that that tree was indeed dead and was in danger of actually falling onto our, our neighbor's property or the Pico line uh, that's adjacent to our, um, uh, that's right in front of our home. Uh, so, um, I mean, that, that was, you know, recorded as well. Um, but yes, uh, 15 were taken down total. Um, if you look in the back corner, those trees back here, which were pine trees, uh, were taken down on or around three, three years ago, I want to say. It's been a while now. Um, it's been a while since we started this project. 
Um, but uh, I believe a total of 24 replacements, and quite honestly, there might be more than that that we plan on uh, planting uh, and replacing. Um, we do have, uh, we, we, we would like some privacy uh, between our, uh, uh, our home and our neighbor's home. And uh, for that reason, you know, many trees do have to be replanted. So the three additional trees are above and beyond the 15 that are on this plan? No, no, they're not. Um, it's a total. It's a total of the 15. It's a total of 15, though. So 12, I believe, were taken down in the past, and I believe three years ago. But I, I do have some photos of... Uh, uh, how some of these trees do appear on our property, um, and you know, I, I just wanted to bring this to your attention, uh, so you could take notice of, um, you know, some of the trees uh, that are having this problem, and and some of these trees, these trees are still standing on our property. Um, we didn't touch them. Uh, however, it's it's un unfortunate to see that. Um, would you mind if I just laid it on top of this? Um, you know, a lot of these trees. The bark on the outside of the trees are dead. They're so dead that they're black and flaking off. And then if you look at some of the trees, they have hollow insides, which only leads me to think they're unsafe to be around for my children and for the house and pico lines on the street and everything. Um, so, you know, we're concerned. And we don't like to take down the trees. That's why we're building the LEED certified home. We do care about the environment a great deal. But when it comes to the safety of our children and um, trees that are unhealthy, I don't think unhealthy trees are good for our family, let alone the other families that are in that neighborhood because of rodents, bugs, you know, the spreading of whatever possible disease it might have. I'm not a tree expert, but that's just my <laughs> thoughts. Okay, I'm, I'm struggling with it because our agenda says there were three additional trees taken down uh, without a permit. I'm sorry, yeah, and, and this was in reference to uh, one of our trees in the back, and um, I, I guess I discussed with uh, Sue earlier today, and, you know, um, even though this, is, this meeting is for the three that were taken down, I just thought it might be an opportunity to... Uh, uh, show you exactly, you know, some of the uh, challenges that we're going through uh, w with some of these trees on, on the property. Um, and uh, this really has nothing to do with the three that were taken down. <laughs> you know, I, I can appreciate that, but I'm trying to narrow in on the three trees that were taken down without a permit. Do you have any information about those three? Um, as far as uh, the species of trees, or yeah, the species and their condition. Uh, the species of trees are are actually reflected on the legend here. Um, you identify which ones they are. Sure. This one here is an oak tree. Uh, this one here was a. It says here a, a cherry tree. I don't think that was a cherry tree. I believe that was a maple tree. I'm sorry, a maple tree. And then this one here was an elm tree. And, and again, you know, we would, we would drop in to visit the home uh, to, to take a peek at the construction and the progress, and a, a huge branch would be down, the tree would be cracked. One of the trees was actually split. Um, I mean, you have huge branches falling onto the driveway or very close to Mill Road and the Pico lines. Um, it just it seemed to pose a lot of danger to, you know, our home and, and the residents surrounding us as well. Uh, I'm a little confused, Howard. Had this been in front of us before? Did you have permits in front of us for the other trees that were taken down before? Yes, we did. Oh, and, okay. and we had this meeting uh, approximately <clears throat> three, 
three years ago. It's been a while. So this is my, my second time around here. Okay. So um, do you, how many trees did we approve you to take uh, down? Twelve in okay. the past. And then there are three dead ones that we okay. just Okay, so we're just down. talking about these three additional yes. trees. Yes, yeah, sorry to uh, <coughs> for the confusion. So, so today, it's only these three trees. Um, that, that's the reason why we're here. Do you plan to take down any others in the future? Well, is that what you came to talk about? Is that what you were going to talk about? Yeah, there was one I wanted to discuss with you. I don't know if that's appropriate for this meeting, but... Uh, yeah. It would be appropriate. It would be appropriate, okay. Um, and, and the one that I was... Uh, that I want to bring to your attention was one right back here. Uh, if you look closely, there are two trees that are adjacent to one another. And again, the, uh, the, the inspector, I just know his first name is Doug and Ray. Um, they came and took notice of this tree, one of the trees, the guy on the left, uh, it's dead. It's completely dead. Um, and the other one next to that are some of the photos that I had taken of uh, the rotting of the tree and, and the bark, the black bark and... Fungus. Fungus. Growing on it. <laughs> but again, you know, we could have a, a certified arborist um, go and take a look at it to make that determination. We're not, you know, certified or even arborists, but... But like he was saying, there's two that are connect, come out of one. The one has no leaves at all. It's just completely dry and bare. And then the other one has the fungus and the black bark and the flaky bark. <laughs> um, Mr. Narsini, do you have any input on this? Uh, thank you, sir. My thought uh, at the last Board of Commissioners meeting, the board did allow us to retain the services of an independent arborist, uh, Mr. John uh, Rockwell Hosback. I, I don't know that they would be needed here. We have the three trees that were removed when our uh, engineering inspector, Doug Meter, was out there. And he's, he is the gentleman who told the uh, applicant to remove the 34-inch tree that was dead. Uh, I, I would think at that point, if they remove one more tree, they're still under the five limit. And I, I would think that would be uh, agreeable. And if they do the replacement tree planning, I think all would be uh, well, yeah, could they just get us a certified arborist letter on the tree that they want to take down? Do you want uh, our certified arborist? No, or theirs? Just whoever they want. That'd be fine, and you could submit that to Sue Jones. Okay, and then uh, process everything, and you'd be good to go. Okay, I'll, I'll have that done promptly. Okay, we're good to go. All right, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Second item is 1300 Eagle Road. Karen McManuels, Associate, Associated Engineering Consultants. Um, and Carl Altamere from Eastern University. That's okay. Um, this is our third time in front of the shade tree. Uh, I was not here last month. Um, I understand there was still uh, a question about the location of the bridge is where we were at. So uh, we had looked at the bridge. The, the plan that's on the table right now is the bridge in its original location. Uh, the bridge that we're talking about right now is the one that goes over the main creek. And I believe uh, the question was, is there a possibility to save this 26 inch ash tree uh, that's on the uh, southeast side? 
Um, we submitted two sketches. Um, the first one, which is C11B. Uh, uh, with this, what we did is we took the bridge and we slid it uh, to the west, uh, closer to the pedestrian bridge. Uh, and we slid it over such that the wing wall for the bridge would um, clear the, the tree for the, the 26, which is shaded here. Um, but what that does is one, um, it moves the bridge very close to the pedestrian bridge. And I do have pictures of that bridge to show you and, and why we don't want to be that close to that bridge. Um, but what it also does is it moves it over such that we would end up losing the four trees on uh, the west side of the road here, which are shaded. One is a uh, 23 maple and 19 ash, uh, 23 or 25 ash and a 32 ash is on this side. So um, we don't recommend doing that. Um, the other plan that we did is C11C in which uh, we tried to rotate the, the bridge um, such that, again, that the wing wall on the east side would not affect the 26. Um, but you can see, and even in rotating the bridge, uh, coming off that bridge, we would still end up losing the four trees on the west side of it. Um, so we're proposing to leave the, the bridge in the location where we originally showed it. Um, we do feel that that's the best location for it and as far as trying to save the, the number of trees that we can save. Um, we did do sections um, through the bridge. Uh, there was a, a drawing, uh, C33, which part of our original package showed the details of the bridge and sections. Um, and what we did add for this submission was C36, which the uh, section at the top um, shows the relationship of the existing pedestrian bridge um, and the proposed new bridge. Um, and you can see the pedestrian bridge, um, there's a waterfall as you come uh, out past the pedestrian bridge. Um, so we do want to stay away from that. We do want to stay away from the banks that are close to that pedestrian. So we were locating it around 20 feet away from that. Now in the bottom one, what is that vertical thing on the right? Down here, this is this is the section I believe uh, somebody had asked for a section through the stream where the ash tree was. So that's what this section is. This shows the trunk of the ash tree in relation to the stream and the bank. So the tree, the um, it's on, not level, but it's relatively level ground. It's not real steep no. on the side of it. Um, no. How close is that to the to the wing wall? It's going to come out of the. How close, really the question is how are the, where are the roots going to be with respect to that, the wing wall sticking out the bottom there? Um, well, that's why we were proposing to remove the ash tree yeah, because actually. of the, the, the wing wall right there. This scale is one inch equals uh, 30 feet. So that looks like we're in the drip line of the tree, but it looks like it's maybe 15 feet, 10 feet away from the actual trunk of the tree. I mean, we can try to save it if, if you know, if you want us to try to save it. Yeah, it's just that that'll also be regraded there too. So I, I just, you know. And the other thing is that you you position the bridge where it currently is um, because of the, the turning radiuses of the of the vehicles that are going to go off of that. Is that correct? Yes, it, yes. For for ease of the turning with the bus and uh, the the distance away, we did want to stay away from the pedestrian bridge and the banks close to the pedestrian bridge. We still wanted to be able to make the, the turn uh, with the bus uh, coming there. And we didn't want the, the turns. These are more of a gradual turn uh, and an S curve. It's not a very drastic S curve to the bridge and the road. It would seem to me, um, and I'm not just saying, suggesting here, but um, it actually would make your your turning radius is easier if you actually move the bridge closer to where that trunk of that tree is, right? Closer to the trunk of what tree? No, if you actually moved it downstream a little bit further. Because Downs, you, right, right where your fingers are. Move it over here further? Yeah, or you could turn it slightly. That would make your, your turning radius is better. If you're going to lose the tree anyway, 
You know, you see what I'm talking about. I'm not. I'm just making an observation. You can ignore me if you want to. <laughs> I am an engineer. But, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not going to ignore you. But there's just two things with with moving the bridge further east. What that does is it puts it closer to the building and the sheds that are behind the building here. Um, and right now, in, in rotating it, right now, uh, the way the bridge is designed, it's like 90 degrees to the stream and to the, um, the piers underneath. So it's a, a parallel and perpendicular bridge, the way it's located. I'm just, our, our whole thought process behind. Um. Just want to add a few things. <clears throat> I walk on the campus a lot. Mm -hmm. I walk on a lot of campuses. We do a lot of work on a lot of campuses. One of the themes we find on a lot of university campuses in this area, in particular, is the quality of tree species and the quality of trees that we have. <clears throat> One of the reasons why I'm on the board is because of being able to save a couple. Good trees is what keeps me coming to meetings every week. Mm -hmm. So I took a walk down here. <clears throat> There's a 48-inch elm tree down here. We look at papers all the time. We look at papers and their circles and their X's, and it, it doesn't do justice to what we really look at <clears throat> when we go down and look at these trees. This is a 48-inch tree growing in a delta floodplain area. This is where elm trees grow. Okay, it's probably been there. I would say close to maybe 90, 100 years. This tree's majestic. Its root flare is beautiful. Its canopy is exquisite in this spot. When you look at the spot, I have pictures of it, I didn't bring it with me tonight, but when you look at the spot where this tree is situated, there's campuses across the country that would die to have an elm tree mm -hmm. on their campus. I don't think you have another elm tree on the campus that's even comparable to that tree. Its aesthetic value, even though no one sees it, is unquestionable. My recommendation would be if there's any possible way that you could save that elm tree by doing any adjustments to this construction project, it would be well worth it, not only for the campus, but for the entire community. That's how valuable I think that tree is. If this can be restructured or reconfigured in any way, it's just that significant of a tree. Mm -hmm. And there's not any of them around anymore. That's why I'm kind of bringing it to a point here, is that where they are, people value them so much, they spend thousands of dollars a year just to keep them alive. And you have an opportunity here to not only if you could alter this, but make it a focal point for the campus and for the kids to actually enjoy this tree you know, I was down there, kids playing volleyball down there, and this tree just sits there. I mean, you saw it. You saw, you saw the, how massive this tree is uh, uh, and the significance of that tree, how it's grown down this delta, down in this floodplain. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where they want to be. The elms want to be down here, you know, where the roots are wet and, you know, where they can really be significant. And it's a significant tree. So that's my piece on that tree. I, I just think it's a very significant tree. That's kind of why I do, why I volunteer my time here is try to save trees like that. We've given up a lot. You know, we've given up big canopy on the other side of campus already. If there's any chance that this could be altered or moved, the, the footbridge, the footbridge moved, the bridge put in that place, however it could be. I'm not an engineer. I don't know how to reconfigure it, but if there's a um, chance for that to be done, it would be well worth it. Well, and, and I appreciate and, and that it is a beautiful tree, I, I, I will admit. Um, but right now, that, that tree, as you right now, that the canopy of that tree is something like that of the tree. No, my pen doesn't work right there. Which tree are we and, talking about? Well, he's, that he's one talking right about there? this one right here, the 48 inch elm. Which this this is the canopy of the tree. Okay. Um, the uh, right now, I mean, in in order to save that tree, I mean, we would have to be completely out of out of that tree and that canopy of the tree, which means it starts moving the bridge all the way over here, and with that, I I can't the turning radius is for the buses. Isn't isn't there? 
So no matter how much I rotate that bridge or just slide it over, even if I just slid, slid it over 20 feet, I still wouldn't be out of that canopy of the tree. I'm, we might be able to slide it over like 10 feet, but I'd still be within the canopy of the tree. Um, you're still building the wing wall, and yes, I might be able to add that. Uh, I still don't think you would save the tree because you're still into the root structure of the tree when you go to build. The okay. And to, I, I agree with you. I am sensitive to the trees and the, and the special nature of, of these types of trees. And if Howard remembers back when we built the dorm and the extended parking lot in front of Doan, there's a 48-inch red oak that we completely moved the parking lot out of the way in order to save, and that is still standing. Uh, that was you know, a, a concession to save the tree where it was in an area that, that had the flexibility in order to move and to do. We doubled the price of the parking lot in order to save that tree. I mean, uh, we were perfectly fine at the time to do that. We had it uh, radio graft or I forget the exact Resist, resist a graft. Resist a graft. I'm, I mean, I am, I am completely sensitive to that. And if there was a, a logical, reasonable way to do that, to save that tree, I, you know, I, I, we really would. I mean, we're not, we're not against that. It's just given the plateau, the plane, the turning radius, the uh, DEP approval for the, uh, you know, the perpendicular construction, uh, losing the aesthetics with the waterfall and, and such by by moving that bridge up closer and stuff. It's it's it it's I, you know I I, I want to save it too, but it's and and I I'm not sure what I can say and in and, and its nature by the way this is constructed. Mr. Chairman, if I could ask a question. Sure. Um, and Ms. McManuel, I I know you had said. I mean, looking at, all, looking at all three iterations, your original one on C11A takes down the least amount of trees, albeit 29 trees. Um, all three take down, recall for the removal of five heritage trees and nine or 10 trees in the 24 to 35 inch diameter range. And I, I know you had just said, but if you were to shift, I mean, I know you have an entrance point here, and we're losing some trees down there. But if you literally shifted this out of that whole zone, what what does that do to your turning radius for the buses and, and actually the geometry of the road? So, looking at that plan view, the bridge would be to the right of the 32 inch ash, the 48 inch ash, like basically bypass that whole group of huge trees that really add a lot of character. They are beautiful trees. I mean, would that be, would you be able to physically do that and follow the appropriate geometry for the road and still make your turn to get to the gymnasium and pool and all that? Um, if I'm understanding you right, you're, you're asking to slide the bridge over to get past all the trees that we're proposing to remove here? Correct. I mean, that would save one, two, several heritage trees and, and the host, not, not to mention the elm, but the group in and of itself. Um, no, that's, that's, it gets too far over. I, I don't have the turning radius to come off that bridge with a bus. It puts me too, too close to the back of the building. Is this for like full size? Buses it's, or the vans or I it's mean, for a full size bus when they come for athletic events and the students from the other colleges that come on a bus. We want to make sure that a bus can get in there and turn around. From uh, again, just humor me if you would. Sure. So we're we're in that area for the, sh the sake of the Shatier Commission. We're in that area between the 318, 317, and 317 contour, and if it would cross there, I. You know, you're doing some work on the banks of the stream with your, uh, as you enter over the bridge, That's exit over the bridge now. Right here. Actually, you'll be even more to the right. <laughs> I, I, I'm taking it from the edge of the 48 inch ash drip line, like somewhere in there. W would there be enough room, right. you know, to 
uh, provide a cartway and that turning radius at the top of the bank of the stream. So you would begin your, your paving as you do here at the top of the bank to let them make that shift. Well, that's what I'm saying right now. If I just slide this over, if you're looking on the, the plan here, the, the green and the bridge right here. This right here, I have that distance. Okay. I was thinking somewhere way over here, this is the outer edge because that's the 48 inch ash. And if you were to come in here, would you have enough room to be able to get your buses through? And that way you avoid the whole entire mass of trees there. No, I don't have the turning radius here. This is the building right here. Right. I, I don't have a turning radius here for a bridge, for a bus. But that would be if you have the bridge perpendicular to the stream flow. He, he made the, he made yeah, the comment. He, okay, if I start to, to skew it, and do this, that means I'm, I'm coming up with some kind of road that I have to swing all the way around here in order to get the, Brit, the bus and the turning radius. So now I'm getting into all these woods and removing all these trees over here in order to swing. Remind him. <laughs> Want to repeat that comment for him? Yes. If, if, I, if I eschew the bridge in order for the, the, the bus to be able to turn off here, that means now I need to bring the road up and around through here and be able to turn the bus back here. And if I do that, I'm removing all the trees in this area. We can't right here is the woods line right here. So that means I need to bring, I'm only, I'm, now I come into that deep S curve. So now I have the bus coming around here and coming around here. Would that be true? If the bridge were, so, um, you see where you have it, you have it drawn like, Parallel to the existing bridge, if you angled it there, mm -hmm. rather, um, but that's not getting me out of all these trees and around all these trees. But if you if you did what you had mentioned, and I, I don't know the size of all those trees down there. I mean, it's obviously it's not listed; it's out of your work zone. But in the aggregate, and I'll pose it to the commission: Would we be better off losing more smaller trees than these huge than these five? heritage trees, not to mention the nine, still sizable, 24 to 35 inch. And I, I, again, I don't know what it looks like over here, but if, if that, Ms. McManus, if that gave you a bigger pallet to bring the road around and skew it, as the board had mentioned, and, and possibly assist your turning radius, is that something that could be investigated? Well, I think there's still a large, no, there's, there's small trees in there, but there are large trees in that area too. And, and I so understand I think that. you're, end up, you're, you're you're, you know, just exchanging them. I mean, but do we have a confluence of, of heritage trees on, in, that oak, in that area to the right, like we do right where your bridge is? It, on the whole, it looks like that's just a real tough spot from a tree standpoint to bring that bridge in. It's just going through, you know, I mean. Well, it, it, in lieu of the trees, it's really the best spot to bring no, the bridge No, I, I said just from a tree standpoint, not from grading or road geometry, I fully understand the other parameters you work in, but. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, the trees right by his finger, a little closer on the, that right there, those trees on the, the up, I guess it's the downstream side of the, because downstream's up to the right, right? Yes. Um, those trees right, right there, those, are those also heritage type trees? They're ash trees and a maple tree. There's three ash trees and a maple. Are they the, the, big, the big trees that you want to save also? One's 26, the maple's eight, uh, I think that's a 22 and a 32. I, I just took a quick inventory. I mean, I, I would rather give up a number of those ash trees clustered in that woods to swing this over that way if you could save that one elm tree. I mean, it's what's I what? think it's going to be very difficult for the maneuvers for the buses, to be honest. We've looked at this extensively, um, and I'm just. I, I don't want to make it that tight that the buses aren't going to be able to maneuver around and, and get through here. I mean, that's the point is to get the buses off of Fairview and off the entrance and closing those entrance off of Fairview. I mean, that's the point of this road. Not, not to make it onerous for, for the applicant in showing the whole new geometry, 
Would it, would it be worthwhile to show the Shade Tree Commission the, the, to tab the trees that are in that area so we get an idea of what would happen if this whole thing did shift? No, we'll have to resubmit. We'll have to resubmit to the DP. Mm -hmm. Another year. Bridge is going to be, it's not going to be straight over the stream. It's going to be at an angle. And my thought was, and I, I'm not trying to make it so onerous for the applicant, but if you showed the trees that were here, and then before you even sketch it, the Shade Tree Commission can say, you know what, it's worth it to lose 20 of these other trees. So maybe instead of a total of 29, maybe it's 40 trees, but they're not these huge ones. And maybe we even save some of them in the meantime. Maybe we don't. I don't know. Oh, you're going to have some big fills. Or this is, this is fine. But you're also, this is like that. Another, another year, uh, Floor plan. Mm -hmm. You don't want to start filling it again. I mean, right here, we're cutting it. We're, we're not really filling anything. Um, once I start, start filling it over here in the grades and everything that I need to make up, you know, I start filling this oh. all, all in. And it's a DEP issue. This is really steep over here, isn't it? Well, this is yeah, I mean, this right, right here, here. But yeah, it this drops way off quickly. Kicking down. Yeah, you know, swinging it over here, and I start, this, these are one-foot contours. So you're, you're going to end up having to bring this up. I mean, this is 318, and this is over here on this side, uh, 323. So I have this huge difference, which means I need to start filling this in. Somehow I need to feather the grades back, which retaining means I'm still going to start impacting those trees then. What if you used a retaining wall to come up there? You're building a road. Yeah. Go for that. It's just, it's just, it's just tough because it's just going right through the dead center of everything. But can you swing it any more at all? Not necessarily out here, but can you give that tree a little more relief, even if it's 15, 20 feet? So, something like this, I was going to say, I mean, we can swing it out here and, and, and say we don't want to remove this and see if it survives. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, it's doable. This, this right here, I don't, I, I would probably want to do something a little bit different the bridge. I mean, if, if, if this is all I have to to try to work with and swing the road out that way, and you're okay with that bridge, then yes, we, we can look at that. And um, I don't know that it's going to be quite like that. I have to look at the turning gauges right, for right. the bridge. But if this is what's acceptable um, to say that. Uh, we appreciate you showing that. the true scale of the uh, trip line like we had asked, because it really lets everybody get a good look of what we're dealing with. I mean, I know you're not going to be able to bring it out to the edge of the drip line, but is there some other me mechanisms they can go through? What's the... I'm, I'm trying to see what... I'm, I'm reading upside down. I'm terrible at that. What, what's the cut or fill in this area? Well, this right here, we're trying... I did it on your other ones, but I didn't do it on the original one. This right here, there is no, not a cut here. This is we built this up just a little bit to get over the, 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 the stream. So there's, there's no cut. 
So it's just boxing out for the roadway, more this or less? This might be a little bit different. Here's, here's 322, um, and this is uh, 323 and 324. So there's along the edge here, we start dropping it down. This is 22, 23. So this is 24, and the natural 22, and 22, uh, 23 is going over here. So this is a little bit of fill. So maybe it's not paying with the shower. Yeah, well, the elm has a s relatively healthy surface. Sure, surface rooted tree. Mm -hmm. Where they're filling the. Is there something that when you fill over that drip line? Like if that they added, you know, the, like the roadway box is going to be about whatever, 10 inches, right? Mm -hmm. Four inches of asphalt, eight inches of stone, mm -hmm. 12 inches. What if they made the entire fill crushed stone? For drainage, does that help the tree? Does it not matter because they're going to be on top of it anyway? Because they're going to have to strip the topsoil off to put the road. So if there's any shallow roots, they're all gone. Well, this is going to be there's going to be a lot of impact here because they have to put this buttress wall, pour this buttress wall, and do the excavation for these wing walls. So this is going to become pretty much their access for road to get to here to begin with. You know? So that's where the compaction starts. And the construction equipment is already here. So. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're going to be into the root zone. You say you're going to be a little higher. I mean, there could be a uh, to so we're not grading on top of the elm tree. You could put a retaining wall on the roadside here to get a grade. So we're not grading it back onto the top of the elm tree as you, as you come up that way. It has to be a grade. Well, this yeah, this is flush with grade. I mean, if, once you put a wall here, you're you're changing the 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 flow of the stream. Could the, could, would, does the, and I, uh, again, not to make it very complicated for you, does the hydraulics of the bridge, if that was changed, could that make right up for that? The way this bridge is designed, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have an impact on the flow of the stream. That's why it's designed the way it is. We haven't affected the banks through here. We haven't. We've stayed away from the honey. Your flood line comes through here, so we haven't I mean, if you were to angle it the way that you're suggesting, would that? I, I need to play with it just a, a little bit to make sure. To, to make sure. Yeah. Because no matter what, they're going to strip the topsoil off the top of that roots within that area. So there's going to be, even though it's a fill, there is a cut in that they have to strip. Be stabilized. Not, not necessarily. It's more a question. You know, the more room you can give. What determines the length of these windows? The grading and the elevations are what we have to do. We have to be the um, section here to the shares here. This is the section for the solar bridge here. Right now we have, so this, where you said this was an existing uh, 322 grade right. right here. So right at the up, come off the bridge, we're at 324. And we're bringing it down. And this, what determines that is we have a 100 year flood elevation right here, roughly 320. And we have a foot clear here. And we didn't want to make it real down. And then you have the structure of the bridge itself. Right. So that's what kind of sets our points on, the, on both sides of the banks and staying out of the banks and then you know, uh, support them on piles. So that's what kind of set all our elevations here when we go down here. And the wing walls and buttress to support your piles? To, not to support the piles, but to support the grading. Because I'm up here at 24, and then I don't want to impact the flow and the banks of the stream. So in order for me to get back down to the existing grades here, these are the grades mm -hmm. that are coming off the bridge. Right, right, right. Two foot on the one side, then there's the other. Well, where would the where would the roots where would that impact the uh, the like the uh, 
the drip line or the, or the roots of the tree. How big is the canopy? So it's a uh, it's way out here. It's inches. all way across the road. Yeah, so you can see the canopy of that tree goes on the other side of this branch. <laughs> let me answer that. I don't know if DEP would let you do it. <coughs> would it. I know they don't like this, but would it be less impactful to armor that bank? So that way, basically, it's graded and armored as opposed to digging the footings. Forming, pouring. What's armored mean? Well, it's, like it's large rip wrap. Mm -hmm. okay. you, you have, the, you still have depths right here. I mean, that's. It, it, I don't think that that um, takes care of the wing walls. The, this right oh, here, you still have. Unless you have an HD twenty rating, you have to. Right. Take I mean, the these, are, these, are, these are the black dots here represent the piles mm -hmm. that are going to support, and then the, the pile cap that comes across yeah. here. That the, these are precast T's that are going to come and in. And you have support. piles through the wing walls. We have piles to help support the wing walls, right? Because you're not going to get any kind of bearing, any kind of soil bearing through here. Yeah. And these footings, we can make this footing, well, it's not really a footing, it's a, it's a grade beam. This can be a little bit smaller. So it's piles, grade beam, retaining wall. Quite a conundrum. All right, guys, and what do you want to do here? You want yeah. to look into this possibility? This, this route was, they all had five heritage trees coming out, but this had five less trees in the original option. Mm -hmm. Still the same impact on heritage trees and one less of the second tier, but that was a less impactful of all. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's a chance it won't destabilize it if we can take a chance of protecting it, I, you know, it's, what, a 40, 30 percent chance of it surviving? Or I mean, if they, work? when they strip the tops on all, if they root pruned and then deep root fed the tree, you know, for a period of years yes. afterwards, would that give it a shot of mm -hmm. surviving? The other thing to think about get, is being that the canopy, I mean, if this is the canopy, I don't know how high that canopy starts. If it's more it's than four, 14 or 15 feet, then then the buses will clear. But if it does start lower, no, it's up like 40 feet. It may survive. We are proposing. We did switch out uh, the trees that we were putting in is to put back um, yeah. trees to yeah. put back in. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Is this road level, or is it tilted slightly? This way. It's tilted slightly that way to, well, to drain. The good thing about it then is your salt runoff won't run into that one. It'll more run this way. Mm -hmm. There be some help. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. Because when you get the asphalt so close and you have the salt running off, that's probably even worse. But if it's angled this way, at least, you know, maybe. Okay, um, I'm sorry to keep you all in the dark out there. <laughs> um, Eastern has explained to us the constraints that they're under. Um, and we are recommending any relief they can give to the elm whatsoever. Uh, you know, and even if it's a 15 foot shift of that that proposed driveway and angling the bridge just slightly. Um, you know, we would be in favor of that and try to hold on to that elm as, as best we can, at least, um, you know, pay respects to it, if you want to call it that, and hopefully it survives. Are you okay with that? We're, um, I believe we're okay with that. That's yeah, I, we'll, I hate we'll, to keep bringing you back, but that is a, it's it's an amazing tree. And I know it's a tree, and you have a program to run, and we're going to hear about that later, but, you know, yeah. we'll see. Okay. 
this 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 was in concession to uh, work with our neighbors so we're we're doing the best we can to make sure that happens for them right i understand that okay, okay. so does that mean you want to see this again next month is that what you're saying uh, Steve, how are you with that? I'm sorry, I, I apologize, I didn't hear that. She asked if um, she wants to, us to bring them back next month. If, in fact, they can provide some relief for that tree and put it before you all, and you're okay with it? I, I, again, in deference to the applicant, I know I'm not trying to slow the project down, but I... I would request that um, Ms. McMahon um, show the stew of the bridge, maybe show a note on the plan. Uh, you know, I'd mentioned um, what, and, and the board would know more than me, what the plan would be to help that tree along for, say, the next five years, whether it's, you know, a root pruning and deep root feeding or something to help nurture that through that and note that on the plan. And then the contractor is going to know that this is not just another tree that right. you, you, you rip through. We know they're going to have to strip the topsoil off the top of it. Um, but if, if maybe to come back to this board so they're, everybody's on the same page, we see how much right now the edge of road is 13 feet from the center of the tree, and that's right. dead center. So right. you have to subtract the <coughs> half the diameter. Yep. Um, so if the engineer could swing that out another 10 feet or so and then provide some type of program for how they're going to try to keep that tree going for the next x years that this board would be able to to speak to which i, I don't have the expertise on okay um if you put a lot of effort into this and you've been in front of us before anything you can do that to, to help us with this and uh this tree is so significant that i'm even willing to, for our company to volunteer to help you prepare the tree for the construction and give it its five-year program after that. Um, we can put that all in writing for you and give it to you and, and do the work for this tree. Okay. So it's that significant. If you can give us some room, we can do the pre-prep for you, give it a shot, and do it for five years and give you a program to keep it going. I mean, it's that significant of a tree that I'd like to have the township have it for years to come. If, if construction realistically doesn't start till the spring would it be beneficial to cut the roots now and give them a few months i, I don't uh, know that, how that it would, works it would just be best just to just to start your aeration and fertilization now going into the fall you know and just do a complete uh program for the tree prior to any construction right. and the final thing you want to do is do any cutting at so the it's end too late in the season for it to to say, okay, I need to find new roots and send out new leaders, and say it's too late for that this this year. Then no, it's as long as the soil temperatures are, are are warm enough. It's constantly, it's still growing and it's still absorbing water. It's just when things go dormant, then they're dormant. But right. anything you can do, it's just a significant significant trick. But you you can help them with that in the next few weeks or months if they absolutely. Want to. Be happy to volunteer my time to help you with that to uh, assist you in anything you would need to uh, to help that trick. Uh, my question, um, what does this do to your schedule? I mean, you say you're going out for construction in the spring. What time do you have to go out for bid? Well, I would say, I, I only said spring because we got another month coming back here and stuff, but uh, I would think that we would probably be going out to bid within the next 60 days or so. Right. I think we want to get prepared for the start of construction in, in the spring. I mean, obviously, we're, we can't start construction this winter, but, I mean, the thought is to start construction in the spring. Um, now, does, does the, the one month, does that create a real problem for that? Does, if One month is 30 days out of your 60 days before you were going to bid. That screws up your schedule, does it not? Or? I, we, we're, we're just interested in trying to build this as quickly as possible because it was a concession to the neighbors and the student center and all of that. But, I, you know, the 30 days, uh, you know, if, if it saves the tree, it saves the tree. I'm, that's, that's fine with us. I, I, I'm willing to give it a chance, I, you know, with, I don't know how we'll keep the construction vehicles around the rest of it, but, you know, we'll, we'll do our very best. With your help, we'll, we'll do what we can. I said, uh, okay. I mean, it'll still be standing after the construction. We'll, it may be a little scarred, but we'll, we'll do our best. 
where we can um, show protection around the trunk of the tree. And, not, and we, like you said, if you can work with us and put the special notes on the drawings and stuff. Okay. Um, and I look at shifting it. I can't guarantee the 15 feet, but I'll shift it over as much as I can as long as the buses can still maneuver. And, that, and that's really the basis and the location that I'm, the design guidelines that I was using. Okay. Okay. Um, has that tree ever been evaluated as a state champion? To the best of my knowledge, no. I, I, I'm not aware of it. As a what? State What's called a state champion. State champion. Whether, you know, when they, there are trees that you know, are registered with Pennsylvania Forestry and you know, they qualify as the largest you know, or, um, example of a, of a particular species. And a uh, 48-inch elm, in my mind, might be in that category. That's, that's you know, that, I think that's the issue. Okay, I'm sorry to drag this out. Uh, now you have a construction of a new entrance as well? Well, this has been before you too. This is the third time in, before you. <laughs> um, at the, uh, we got approved, uh, we had a conditional approval uh, for this entrance in July. And uh, one of the things when we were here in July, um, you had asked us to look at shifting the road over, uh, if you look on C11A, uh, this was the overlay uh, showing the existing road and the new, the shaded new proposed road. And you had asked us to uh, look at shifting the road over uh, 10 feet away from the 30-inch uh, oak tree at the shed. Um, so we did look at uh, doing that and what the impact that would have. Um, and we have some uh, sketches here, what that, what that did to the road, um, which was submitted the package, the sketch C11B, which is the eight and a half by 11. We blew the plan up a little bit to show. It's not a full size drawing, it's an eight and a half by 11. This is it, this is what was submitted. Okay, we don't have that in our packet. Mm -hmm. um, this Real quick. Bring it up here, or, uh, or do you want us to come it? down there? Well, wherever you he, can see it. He has a copy. Oh, do you have one? Yeah, have one. Oh. Okay. So what the what the sketch shows is um, the heavy lines, what we, well, first of all, what we did is we drew a, a 10 foot circle off the, uh, the tree. Um, and since there was a the 30 inch, uh, 36 inch pine, we did that too. So what we're doing is looking uh, to move the, the road over to clear that tree. Um, but what that does is it shifts the road uh, a, a lot closer to the house that's on the east side um, and the pathway, um, and it's it, it makes it such with the grading that we would need to uh, add a retaining wall um, there. So uh, we felt it made it too close uh, to the to the house. So when we resubmit it for the uh, grading permit, um, without shifting the road, Dave uh, Lay had mentioned that we needed to come back to the shade tree um, and get your approval again. Uh, because we were proposing to leave the, the road in the same place. So what this sketch shows is the very light lines, dashed lines uh, to, on the left is the existing road. The darker dashed lines is the uh, proposed road that we had. And the heavy solid lines is the road shifted over. And what we did is we cut sections through the, the road and uh, we cut a section at the house coming off the corner of the house. And you could see uh, the retaining wall ends up being one foot eight off the corner of the patio. And we have about a, a 18 inch difference in grade there. That's why we added a site wall. 
Um, and what the second uh, section shows, it shows uh, where the existing curb and uh, roadway is versus the new uh, curb and roadway. Um, coming off the, the shed, the new curb is, is slightly to the east, um, but we're roughly the same uh, grade elevation as that existing road. So basically for that existing road, we would just be removing the asphalt and putting in a new curb and putting new asphalt down. So we wouldn't be digging, really, really digging in that area. Okay, um, I think our consensus then is thank you for doing your best to move that away from the oak. Um, but you're correct, probably using the existing driveway mm -hmm. would cause the, the least disturbance to the tree. Uh, and also, uh, when you mentioned curb, what, what type of curb are you talking about? Uh, concrete curb. Typical 18 inch uh, concrete curb. Is there any curb there now? There is a curb there now, yes, it is curbed. And it's concrete? Yes. Is there any possibility you could reuse the existing curb? Um, hmm. Are we talking about leaving the road exactly where it is, or the first place? No, that they we, thought about we putting would. It? The, the original proposed road is the, uh, uh, and the sketch is the heavy uh, dashed lines. So it's it's shifted over. At one point, you know, we're we're for the most part we're further east than the existing curb with our new curb, and at one point we're right on the the same uh, curb line. So the the uh, curve of the road we. The other thing we were trying to do with that is the existing road, again, if you follow the light dash lines, is fairly close to this house on the left side. So with the new road, what we were trying to do is kind of split between the two houses so we weren't closer to one than the other. And so that's what kind of gave us our original location. And it works such that, you know, grade in that area, we can keep it the, the same. We weren't raising and, and lowering it too much. Condition of it is or anything, even if, what is that, like 150 feet? I don't know what the condition um, is. On would that. we be it's able to way. eliminate the curb in that area as opposed to reuse that existing one? So we wouldn't be digging down the 18 inches? Would that be acceptable? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting at. Either that or, um, you know, a, a simple um, asphalt curb that would be you know, more surface mounted than a, a deep concrete curb. Um, for that section, uh, we, if an asphalt curb is acceptable, I think we would prefer that option. The water's probably gonna go against this edge. Yeah, this edge. I mean, this, the road is sloping to the east, so it is going against the curb on the east side and not the west, so um, we would like to have some kind of curb, but I think the asphalt curb in that area would be uh, uh, acceptable. Okay. The, the heavy dash line, if, if you're saying that we can leave it where we originally proposed the road, which is what I'm understanding, so it would be where the heavy dash line is. So what we would do in the area of that tree, we would make that the asphalt curb so we're not digging down, that the asphalt curb would be at the bottom of the asphalt and it would have you know six inches on top of the asphalt, so it would be a total of probably eight, eight to 10 inches. Um, yeah, I, I think that would be 
probably the best compromise. And again, there will be a, a need to prepare the tree for uh, what you're about to do, the same issues as okay. the, the deep feeding and um, you know w any work that's done and they do run across root systems that you know they'd be cut and not not pulled out by a backhoe and that sort of thing. Okay. We'll add the notes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Good, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, 615 Newtown Road. Good evening. Patrick Stewart, I'm a uh, landscape architect with Ursadi and Associates. And um, Mr. Ursadi just passed out a, uh, the Arborist report that we just received a few days ago for the property. Um, I know we were here before you last month. I wasn't here, Joe was here, and uh, the applicant. Since we've been here, we've had uh, our engineer lay out the plan, um, do the stormwater management for it, and we've submitted it to the township. Uh, there's two critical things that are going to impact the number of trees that we can save on the site. Um, we're asking the township for some relief. Uh, one of the items we're asking for is a reduced right-of-way along the proposed road. The township code requires a 60-foot right-of-way. And um, we also have required to have a 60-foot front yard setback in the R1. And on this plan before, th on the table here, if we had to comply with a 60-foot right-of-way and a 60-foot front yard setback, the red line would be where the front of the houses could be constructed. And um, as you can see from this site plan, along Newtown Road, there's a nice stand of mature trees. There's also a stand of evergreens that wrap around Sprawl Road. And to the south of the property is Van Leer's Run, and there's a mature stand of trees down along there. So what we're trying to do with the relief is we're trying to pull the development to the center or pull it to the roadway um, and limit the amount of disturbance into the, I call it the necklace of trees that surround the site. Um, we're all, the front yard variance, if we're successful in obtaining that and the reduced right of way, the yellow line would be where we could construct the houses. And I, it's significant. We could significantly pull in the grading. Storm water would be less We'll have less impervious coverage. I think it's a benefit to the entire site. Um, the plan that we have engineered is reflective of the blue line on the plan here. It's a 28-foot right-of-way and a 60-foot front yard setback. We will be before the zoning hearing board, I believe, in the next month. And we will have a final resolution on whether we're going to have that. We'll be successful in getting that variance. That will impact how many trees we can save. So what we've done for tonight's meeting the blue line's where you want to be allowed to build, right? That's what you're asking for. The yellow. Yeah, the yellow, the yellow ultimately. For. Yeah. Okay. The yellow would pull it in the most, yeah. And that's tough. These are some cross sections through the site just to further illustrate what I was just explaining. The top cross section represents a 60-foot uh, right-of-way and a 60-foot front yard setback. And the limit of disturbance is illustrated by the, the red and black lines, and it's tough to see on the screen there. As we move down the sheet here, 
the next section illustrates what the plan is currently engineered at. It's a 28-foot right-of-way and a 60-foot front yard setback. So our limit of disturbance comes in on both sides of the development. And ultimately what we're seeking is a 28-foot right-of-way and a 35-foot front yard setback. And you'll see how the building envelope gets pulled in, and that's going to help us save a lot more trees on the site. Uh, our arborist, Rockwell Associates, they've went out to the site. Um, they've identified 411 trees on the site over six inches in caliber. They did not look at trees on the other side of the Van Leers run. Uh, we're not proposing any disturbance down there, so we asked them to stay to the north of there. And there's also a parcel of land on the other side of Sprawl Road, uh, a little under an acre, that's heavily wooded along the Ithan Creek that we have no plans to do anything there. We've been in talks with the township about possibly dedicating it or um, possibly to a conservation, into a conservation easement so that it's maintained as a woodland along the creek there. On this plan on the table, I've highlighted in green circles the heritage trees that occur on the site. There's a total of 32 of them identified in the report. It starts on page 38 and goes to page 39. I'm sorry, it starts on page 36, the definition of uh, the heritage. There's 32 of them, 14 of them are in poor condition, nine of them are in fair condition, and nine of them are in good condition. Um, of the 411 total trees identified on the site, only 30 of them were deemed to be in good condition. Unfortunately, I think the estate's been left, uh, the trees have not been cared for properly over the last 10 to 15 years, and some of them have decayed, some of them have had cables that have come out, and so there's, there's definitely, I have some photographs I'll just pass out to give you an idea. Yeah, sure. And this is a representative sampling of? Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, there's a beech tree in the woods that's 40 some inches that's, you can tell it's totally decayed and falling apart. There's some, uh, the majority of the trees on the site are ash and maple. And some of the maples have completely hollowed out. Some of the heritage maples have completely hollowed out. Most of them are sugar maples. Um, so it's tough to see here. But here's a sugar maple. The whole canopy has got decay in the top of it. It's lost some major limbs. Another sugar maple that's completely hollowed out. So we're really focusing on with our engineers the, the heritage trees that we think we can preserve on the site um, of the nine that Mr. Hoshback has recommended to be saved, we, th we believe there's only two of those that will be removed as part of the development. They occur right where the roadway will come in here. Um, the other heritage trees that will be saved on the site occur around the main estate home. There's a sycamore tree. I think it's 68 inches in caliper in the back of it. It's quite spectacular. Um, the trees on here, it's probably, I don't know if you can see it from the screen, but the trees with the red X's in them, and I can bring it up to you and show you, are trees in the report that have been deemed hazardous um, and should be removed. So, you know, when you look at it, there's, there's a few around the main cottage that are going to be remaining, um, around the main estate home. There's one big ash on, this, on, the, on the slope of the driveway back here that will remain. Um, there's a nice specimen sugar maple. Um, that's we're going to try to preserve there. So there's really, it's a spruce and an oak that we think are the, uh, of the of the 32 heritage trees, are the two that we definitely have to take out. The ones back on the slope that are deemed hazardous, I think we need to look at them a little closer and see if there's uh, any way they could be preserved. Some of them are not anywhere near the development, so there, there may be maybe an effort to leave them in, in their state, but... Uh, there's a couple sycamores that have pretty bad anthracnose and decay in the canopy. Okay, could you clarify something? You said that Rockwell Associates suggested they could save 
nine of the 32 heritage? Yes, that's correct. And what you, then you mentioned something about two additional that you would have to take down? Of the nine, two of those I think we're going to definitely have, we'll be losing that occur where the roadway comes in. Yeah. Where are the seven? I'll point them out here for you. There's a, uh, the tags are indicated on here. I can read them off to you. There's a, uh, there's a 54 inch sugar maple. There is a 41 inch beech that is along the existing driveway. Right now we have a uh, stormwater system proposed under it. That's gonna be changed. Um, our engineer didn't have the benefit of this report when we first prepared this, so that will be changed. Back behind the existing estate home, the sycamore occurs right off the corner of the house here. The tree identified as 239 in the report is a 43 inch maple. Again, there was a stormwater system proposed there. That's gonna be changed and removed to preserve that tree. Um, there's an ash along the driveway. There's a large sycamore to the rear of the existing cottage. Um, 202 is a large ash. It's 40 inch ash to the north of the cottage. Along the existing driveway, tree tag three is a uh, 42 inch sycamore that's in great condition. And 21 in the woods here is another great uh, sycamore. Some of the trees in the woodlands that are in bad shape are um, tulip poplar. They're just, you know, they're 40 some inches and they're starting to drop some major limbs and have decay. So. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may uh, just let the board know, uh, when staff originally reviewed this plan and the applicant was before the Board of Commissioners, uh, we very much favored the reduced uh, setback for all the reasons uh, that were put forth. And if you look on these, the, rear, the further pages, using the further setback pushes their sediment basins and all their stormwater further back into the tree line. So uh, knowing that they have to go to the zoning hearing board, but the staff was supportive of the plan in general and the measures the applicant was taking to try to uh, accommodate the ground that was there. I, I do have one request for the applicant. Well, my colleagues and I were, were looking at this on a sheet C02.1, which is your existing conditions plan. Uh, I know that further back you have an overlay on that. We would just request if you could give us a full size of that existing conditions plan. Sure. It makes it a little easier to, to look at those trees. No problem. The, the overlays are fine. No problem. And the, and the existing conditions plan that has, I believe we've submitted that last time we were before you. Um, our arborist found that a lot of the trees, you know, for instance, there was a 36 inch ash on the plant. It's really a 50 inch ash. So there's some discrepancy. So now that we have the report, you know, that, that can all be clarified. Um, we don't know the total number of replacement trees that will be required yet, but we've shown 135 on our landscape plan. It may be more than that, it may be less. A lot of that's gonna be impacted by whether we're successful in the waiver for the right of way and the variance, which will help us limit our disturbance. But um, one thing we're considering doing is we wanna put a nice uh, oak street tree program in down the main cul-de-sac. We're also looking at um, introducing some evergreens along Sprawl Road to enhance the buffer that's there. There's a lot of white pine that have lost their lower limbs and there are some openings that you can see into the site. We think it would be a benefit to enhance that buffer with some spruce and some more shade tolerant evergreens underneath. Along Van Leer's Run, there are some mature trees, but there's a many gaps along that riparian buffer. And we think the use of some native shade and understory trees along that corridor makes a lot of sense to put some replacement trees in there. And uh, also along, along the western boundary, um, where the existing residential neighborhood is to the west, we think it makes sense to beef up the buffer in there. There's some trees that are gonna come out in there and I think they should be, uh, some replacement trees should go in there to, to benefit those neighbors. Um, you, you mentioned your oak, <clears throat> you're lining a driveway with, with oaks. Um, 
Yeah, you have a ways to go yet, but one of the things I think you might want to consider is is not putting in one species. Okay. Um, you know, we've got you know red oak, black oak right now, and there are you know allays of red oak and black oaks, and they're suffering because yeah. they uh, it's a monoculture, and if a disease hits them, they they all go down eventually. Yeah. Are they? Are these? Uh, I see the road coming off from the top left corner, and it's coming down. Are those the trees you're proposing along the side of that road, or am I misreading it? In this area here. Well, yeah. Well, I'm looking at the little round circles with the D's in them, or whatever they are, on either side of the road. Yes. Thanks. Yes. They were uh, sawtooth oak. They were proposed as sawtooth oaks. And. One of the comments in uh, the review letter we've received, we have some stormwater beds that are right along the curb line. We're going to re-engineer this and pull them back so we can have a continuous street tree program along the road. It's a desire we'd like to in implement there. Okay. Um. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Thank for, you for your your uh, guidance and presentation on this. It's uh, it's very helpful. What one thing? Um, if, if I could have one more minute, please. Um, we had received some support from the planning commission and supervisors um, for the relief that we're requesting. If uh, if you'd be inclined, we'd we'd appreciate your support as we move forward to to. Implement what we're trying to do here is, you know, save trees and pull this development in. We think uh, it, it benefits the township by preserving views along Newtown Road and Sprawl Road and uh, reduces the overall footprint of the development. So, so to whatever extent you could, we would appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have an issue because I need to recuse myself and we don't have a quorum. Um, Question. Is Bob still around or we don't have our council here, do we? No. We it's not what? We don't have an alternate to go on. We could do the hazardous tree report. I mean I I know it's an hour and a half after the meeting started, but I know he's coming from a long distance. Maybe he, he shows. I sent him an email when you were up talking. I, I can go back and see if he's answered yet. Okay. Okay, if you can. Hey, wait we're here. A few okay, minutes. it's the people who aren't here that are causing you the trouble. <laughs> Okay, we had several um, hazardous trees. There was a 40-inch uh, maple with a hollow interior, um, and then 275 uh, Hawthorpe Road, or Lane rather, had a 43 American Beach uh, with severe dieback and uh, beach bark disease. And then 104 Browning, um, also had a, a significant, you know, heritage tree that had split itself apart. So, I think we're good with all those uh, three hazardous tree removals. And, uh, sir, it, hopefully by the time the next meeting comes, we will have Mr. Haas back on board. And the idea being, what the Shade Tree Commission is saying, we'll uh, try to group these so that the arborists can come for a day visit each residence and provide this commission with uh, an independent analysis along with the uh, residence arborist. You know, we, we very much appreciate that. Um, and uh, Shanna Claire will also very much appreciate that. OK. 
Okay, sorry to make you all wait. Who are the members of the commission who are not here? Okay, I'm going to make a recommendation that uh, yeah, we table this for tonight. And again, um, and, but I also would request that a plan set be sent to the, uh, the, the Shade Tree Commission, all members, such that they have an opportunity during the next month to review PowerPoint. not the PowerPoint, but the actual plan. You know, particularly the um, several pages that refer to tree removals and a suggested tree replacement. I think there's like four or five pages of that. So that when they get to uh, to next month's meeting, at least they've had an opportunity to review it. Okay, that con concludes the uh, September 2012 Shade Tree Commission meeting. Thank you.